Battery bill. Battery bill. For cameras, computers, cars, or scooters. For trucks, boats, jet skis, remotes. Battery bill. Battery bill. It's ESPN Fan Friday's talk story. You know, it's starting to get basketball season started. University of Hawaii men's basketball actually had their first exhibition game last week. And for ESPN Honolulu, our broadcast team is going to look a little different. The new color analyst for our radio broadcast for men's basketball, University of Hawaii, a name in the basketball community. If you're a fan, you've heard this, Derek Lowe. And he's joining us today. First of all, Derek, congratulations on that. But thanks for joining us today as well. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Always good being here. By the way, so we had one. You had one. Uh, the exhibition game under your belt. How'd it go? Oh, man. How do I? <laughs> so I mean, all I can say was it was like anxiety for like the entire game. Uh, no, but it was fun though. Uh, you know, it's just basketball, but it's a little different because I was used to doing the the pregame show, right? And when you when when you got to do the um the the play by play with which Josh Josh does and and you know the the guy that adds the color, it, you know your 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 window to make comments are really short. So for me, you know, I'm not very uh, good at speaking, so I really have to pay attention and I and and I have to figure out what I want to say. And say it as quick as possible and as, as, as least as possible, too. So it's, it, it's hard, but I mean, it, it is fun because you do get to watch basketball and kind of just spit comments out. But other than that, you know, it's, it, it, it went great. Yeah, and that's one of the things that, you know, kind of a little behind the scenes element when you're doing play by play, not only for any one person or the other, but the color commentator does have to kind of fit that timing in with the play by play person and to get that blend and that mesh and that timing it takes a few games to do it and it's kind of like any team sport like in basketball it takes some time if you know for new players to gel like if you got two new guards coming onto the team for those two to kind of you know kind of see how each other does their thing how to play off of each other a shortstop and a second baseman to play each with each other so it just takes a little bit of that time to see how each other does so you know you got one game under your belt but obviously each game goes on do you find um, yourself like watching the game a little differently, like than you normally would? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, because you know, I'm in that position to uh, you know give comments or kind of give thoughts or whatever I see. It kind of forces me to you know uh, watch a little bit more intently. Um, kind of you know, because I, I I see stuff you know from a player's perspective. You know, so like, you know, I always think of, I always think of it as like, oh, you know, if I had the ball there, you know, what would I have done? You know, if I came off the ball screen like this, so what, 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 what am, I, am I looking for, right? But then now, you know, as I watch, I kind of got to see from a spectator perspective as well, you know, kind of like through the eyes of Coach Kanat, you know, maybe what they're trying to do, what they're looking for and so forth. So it, it does, it definitely does make you look through a different lens. Now, Derek, you have – I've also wanted to kind of ask this question of someone because you have played at, at a very high level, Division One college basketball at Washington State, all Pac-10, um, played even internationally for Team USA. So you've played at a very high level. You've had gone to training camp, summer league for the NBA. Like, I will look at a game – and having some basketball up until high school, you, know, you kind of look at strategically and things of that nature. But you have it at this level way up here. Even if you were just watching it with some buddies, with a beverage in your hand, do you? would you watch and see a game a little bit differently, even on that kind of casual level? Yeah. No, I understand. Like, uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, because you're talking about – Right when you're watching, you're just kind of relaxed mode, right? And you're just watching for the enjoyment of the game. But still, you know, I mean, granted, just because I played basketball, it doesn't mean like I'm an expert. I'm not an ex expert at watching basketball or anything. But you know, I see things how I see it, and you know. But when I do watch basketball leisurely, 
you know, like, you know, with fans or, uh, you know, on the, on the TV, you know, I, I do always kind of pick up, like, I find myself like, ah, that was stupid, you know, like, oh man, you know, that was dumb turnover, you know? So like, I, I do kind of, you know, start analyzing it in that way in a more, uh, informal type of way but um but yeah I, I do i can't help it you know i do kind of see that you know whatever i see on the on on, on the screen and kind of just go off of that you know one of the things that a lot of players coaches you know of course commentators in the media they'll say like for any sport like there are games when you're in the zone right where everything is clicking uh baseball you see the ball is this big uh basketball everything is going in i mean you are just stroking and as a player you can see 360 degrees around your head it seems like and everything is moving in slow motion for you right i'm sure you had games where you're in the zone i'm going to go on the devil's advocate side did you ever have a game where it just sucked like everything if everything could go wrong it did i mean things that you you never made a mistake like this before, but lo and behold, it's like the eight, 12th game of the season, and all of a sudden I made that like you said a, that stupid pass that you never any game like that that you ever had. Oh, absolutely! More times than you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, and like um, so um, let's see, what's a good game to explain? Um, but I mean, if I could just speak in general, you know, um. You know, I've had times where, uh, you know, like you can't buy a basket. Yeah, you no, no, no matter what. You know, you talked about times as the rim is as the uh, as the ocean, right? And no matter what you throw up, it just goes in, right? The other times is when the rim feels like it's this small, okay? And um, and yeah, I've had a lot of games like that. You know, shooting slumps. You know, just and and it kind of just drains you like mentally, right? You start to start to th uh, overthink things it starts to eat at you in your confidence um you know and stuff like that so it, it definitely is a real thing um i'll take it a step further and and another thing that happens you know in those kinds of games and i've had you know i played for teams overseas where you know the coach was so critical and um every mistake you made you know it was a scream at you it was pull you out put you back in mistake, pull you back out, you know? So it's, it's that constant kind of thing where nothing you do is right. And, 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 and the way the game is going, right. You, uh, you start losing, start losing. The other team starts making shots. Everything is going right for them. Everything's going wrong for you. Right. And then at the end of the day, um, you know, because you're the point guard, you know, the coach blames you for the loss. You know what I mean? Because you got a lot of responsibility. So, you know, I definitely, you know, understand what you're, talking about but you know i i did in fact experience a bunch of those games you know played it in situations that weren't ideal but you know as a player you just got to figure things out and you got to work through situations you know because it does it does make you grow as a player as well so it's, it's, that's the only good thing about it it's, well you got um let's talk a little bit about university of Hawaii basketball you um one game you just it's an exhibition and granted it is what it is but your thoughts about the team this year oh Man, you know, just like you said, granted, you know, it was an exhibition game, you know, uh, at times the game, you know, was, you know, a little ugly, but that was expected. We were saying that in the beginning, you know, you know, uh, but I like, I, I, I was actually telling Josh, this team has good pieces to the puzzle. They, they have a lot of good pieces. You know, if I go down the line off the top of my head, right? They have a guy that can put the ball in the basket with Noel Coleman, right? Who, who can shoot the lights out, lefty. Um, you know, they have interior size with Morsec, you know, who comes off the bench. Um, but you got Kamaka Hepa, you got the Silva, you know, you got guys that with size. Uh, Kamaka Hepa can stretch, you know, out to the three-point line with his shot. You got Samuta, who's back from injury after two years, who um who who plays exactly how i expected him to play with with active energy you know just 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 being active and crashing boards and using his athleticism to get to the basket um you know mcclanahan is a tough little player you know who tries to take care of the ball as best as he can plays tough defense you know 
and then you know i don't know if i want to uh i don't know if i want it, it's still sore it's still touchy for me but munoz you know from what i saw in that game oh, he, i thought he was going to be a really good point guard for uh the way he shot the ball and his decision making um but you know it, it just it, it was hard to see you know him go down with that injury last game and this i think which has a lot of good pieces you were a point guard and you just remember you telling me about like a lot of times you had coaches where if the team lost they blamed the point guard because of the responsibility with respect to munoz how much of an impact up here is it obviously physically what he brought to the table and then that's not going to have for the season that's an impact but how much of a impact do you think up here for the rest of the team is that going to be and how long do you think it'll take for them to kind of get over that oh uh, yeah you know 100% it it impacts the team you know i i know the political uh thing to say is uh you know next man up right you know as much as we'd love to have munoz here next man up right that's what everyone says and it is true because you know time doesn't wait you know you got to move on it's so unfortunate for to to see a kid go through that but you know the next man does have to step up everyone has to step up but you know so it does mentally affect the team you know they're all close in you know, videos i've seen a bunch of them uh stay together in in uh in california working out you know getting stronger so that just builds the team so much closer with their camaraderie just knowing that everyone uh gone through the trenches together you know so when one man goes down you know they do feel it 100% for sure you know but then again like i was saying right it's it's it, it's a quick turnaround right what what happened happened as as bad as it is for everybody you know you can feel down you can you can kind of sympathize you know for your teammate and brother but at the end of the day you know it's it, it's a job pretty much at that level you know it's it's a job you got to go out you got to perform you got to you got to do what you can to to be successful so you know for sure they are feeling the loss of moon you know but at the same time you know they they got to move forward and, and get back as quick as possible yeah i mean i i it's one of those things where i just felt like poor guy right because here's a guy who has had injury problems throughout his basketball career heck last year he got injured before the season started was out the whole year plays up until what i think 16 minutes or so of this one and then gets the killies and is out all this year so poor guy did you ever have a teammate or encountered someone that had that i don't want to say bad luck but it is you yeah. know to have that kind of bad luck um that derails your career and th- did you have that experience and how 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 did how were they afterward i can i can imagine it being very demoralizing yeah it is demoralizing uh uh you know to have to go through that um but i can share with you mine wasn't to the same extent as munoz but you know i i can explain to you when i was a freshman at washington state um you know it was our very first practice um as you know it was our first practice of the season and you know as a freshman you're excited to play you know i'm i'm, I'm playing this is the first practice our opening practice you know i'm excited to be here play in the pack 10 washington state I, you know just so much emotions and then you know i i i i jump up and i land on my teammate's foot and then i i i break i fracture my fifth metatarsal yeah and you know uh it's it's devastating i had to go uh they i had to do a surgery they put a big screw in my foot um fortunately um it was only a four week turnaround where i was back on the court again but still mentally like like i was saying i was so excited to be there and then to have to take a step back because of injury and plus being someone who never really got injured before for a long extent you know it 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 kind of made me question like why am i going to get injured now you know i'm here like i'm here at this level of first practice like what's going on right so definitely there's that emotion side to it fast forward to sophomore year right 
I feel like I completed freshman year, sophomore year. Okay, I'm going to turn things around. Okay, I'm a, I'm a year older, uh, you know, uh, ready to take that step, that next step. Uh, and I forget when it was, but it was, it was uh, we were many, I think we were sometime during preseason, I think, and, I, and we were practicing again. And um, I was running through a drill and I ran off the court, uh, and our court is, you know, the, the court is about this much high. It's maybe like three, three and a half inches above the concrete. And uh, I stepped off, I stepped right on that, and it kind of twisted my ankle. But turns out I free fractured the same fifth metatarsal of my same foot. It, it cracked on one side, and it cracked on the other side of the screw. But the screw remained intact, but still... Oh. I was, I was great, you know, like I was so angry. Uh, I, I couldn't believe like, are you kidding me? This happened again, like the same exact injury the very next year, like what is going on? So like, you know, it's emotional. And again, you know, thankfully it's a four week uh, turnaround for this kind of injury. So I was back on the court pretty quickly, but, you know, talk about the, the uh, just, how it makes you feel and the, and the emotional uh, stress that, that it puts you through, you know, injuries is not fun altogether, but to, to do it often and, and back to back and consecutively it's, it's draining. Uh, but, you know, I can't, I can't imagine, you know, what Munoz is, is, is feeling because, you know, it's two big injuries, right. And he's going to have to sit another year, but, you know, like they say, what what doesn't hurt uh, kill you makes you stronger. And if Munoz can can stay with the right mindset, you know, he's gonna just become so much more mentally tougher, you know, for the future. So, you know, I just hope he he can stay that way. Hey, and that's a great story. I'm gonna ask you about another story you told me later, but that's gonna come at the end. But um, you must be pretty happy because you your company Performance Hawaii, you know, with performing and developing young basketball players, boys and girls. Um, I want to talk a little bit about girls basketball, women's basketball a little bit, because the Wahine basketball team have two girls now on their team from your alma mater, Iolani. And for a while, you know, with Lily Wayne Kapu and Jovi Lefotu, the two sisters, um, not only, uh, yeah, it's great, they're from Iolani, you know, but... To see some local talent, and they will be contributors to this Wahine basketball team, no doubt. But you are working with that youth level. How would you assess some of the talent that's coming up through the prep ranks that you see or that you work with, Bo boys and girls? Uh huh. Um, I can speak for the girls' side first. Like, uh, you know, Hawaii has a lot of good girls' uh, uh, talent, especially for basketball. Um, I mean, you can see we uh, Hawaii has sent a lot of girls to to further their basketball careers in college. You know, countless girls. Ever since um, you know, uh, Coach um, Coach Agena has been doing it, right? He sent so many girls to college, and I think he I think he saw the talent that UH had. And you know, on the flip side, on the boys side, it's a lot harder. You know, um, mainly because the the, the gap in talent for boys is, is much greater, right? You have the size factor, you have the athleticism, you have the speed. And, you know, us being from Hawaii, we're, we're, we're kind of behind the mainland uh, players on all those levels. But, um, but for the girls, you know, that, that gap is much, much smaller, which is why you see so much more girls playing in all levels in college, you know. Um, and the way I look at it, hey, if you can play, if, you, if you're from Hawaii uh, and, and you can play at any level in college, you know, NAIA, Division three, Division two, Division one, whatever it is, you know, that's a win. You know, I don't, I don't like to, I, I know a lot of people get caught up in the, in the divisions and in, 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 in the title and status of things, but, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's definitely, you know, um, a blessing to be able to go and further your career, play, play basketball or foot or whatever sport in college, get an education, you know, cause basketball sports is such a small window. I think people forget that, 
you know, um, you know, I, I think I was going to play professional basketball forever. You know, as crazy as that sounds, you know, I, I had that mindset like, ah, I can play forever. But, oh, man, you know, like it's it's like 10, 10. Well, I know some NBA guys, they're a little different. They play for 20 years or whatnot. But, you know, for my situation, 10, 11, 12 years playing professional, boom, it's done. You know, so you still have a lot of life to live. But, um, you know, you, you, you take advantage of it and, and do it while you can. But like you said, uh, girls and boys, you know, anytime we get a chance to play college, you know, I think it's awesome. And, and there are a lot of people from Hawaii that, that have the chance to do that. Now, how old are you now? 36. If the phone rings for a, a team in, in overseas, I mean, you see, would you take that call and would you consider going and playing again? Or is that kind of that you, you yeah. passed that moment? Yeah, I'm, I'm past that. Like, I mean, I think the mind, the mind will tell me, yes, like, oh, man, you can still do that. Like, it's, it's no big deal. You can do that easy, you know. But I think the body will start to tell me, like, uh, I don't know about that. You, uh, we're, we're not feeling it too much. I don't think we can handle it for a whole season, you know, for a whole 10 months. But, um, but yeah, you know, I'm done, I'm done playing. I, I still work out a lot. I still, uh, you know, train in the morning. Uh, I I got to keep in shape because, you know, like I, I'm a, I'm a huge, uh, believer in, you know, being able to do what I make all the other kids do. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there's going to come a point where I won't be able to, you know, when I get much older, but right now, you know, kids love our, our visual learners and they, and, and they'll, I think they respect it a little bit more. If, if what you're telling them to do, you can do that, you know, at a, at a mm -hmm. high level. So I do make sure, you know, I can and can do all that stuff. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. You know, uh, I haven't played in a while as far as up and down five on five. But, you know, I still try to keep things sharp. Hey, by the way, speaking of playing and going five on five, I mean, you uh, were running the, the NCAA Summer League the last time it was run pre-pandemic. Mm. Any update on that returning possibly? Man, you know, like I know a lot of people – you know, wanted to come back and we've been trying to, you know, people say, uh, you know, like, ah, they only ran it one time, and, you know, like, ah, they, it was better at, you know, and they're doing at Manoa. Like, I agree. Like, you know, Pat Tanibe, I don't know how he did it for so long and, and at the success that he did. But, you know, when, 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 when we took it over, um, you know, we had that first year where it was awesome and we thought it was, it, it, we, we hit it out the park um, with our vision and um, but after that um, we ran into uh, problems because we wanted to incorporate all the college players right and so we have to meet deadlines and we have to put in application and we have to put in the specs we have to we have to fill out like the um, they have to know the, the specs of the gym uh, so that they know there's adequate room behind the basket on the sidelines uh, all of that stuff come into play, you know? And so when we were trying to uh, secure St. Francis gym, because it is a ideal location for all the college students to get to, you know, we could have did it at, at, at um, Le Jardin, but um, none of the kids, none of the college players can get there. It's so hard. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. location is a big factor. Um, when we were trying to get St. Francis for that second year, um, that that's when St. Francis was planning to shut down and, um, and, uh, and they were, they were figuring out what to do with the gym. Were they going to sell it? Were they going to do something? So no one was able to, to sign the lease. Um, unfortunately, Manoa gym had too much uh, issues. There was no bleachers. It was broken. Uh, water fountain wasn't working. So, you know, they, they, it wasn't a good gym to use. And then the following year, um, the following year, uh, covid so um just everything kind of just went negative you know and, and it was hard to get it started and so we just been trying to we, we've been keeping it in our back pocket we're just thinking when's the next time we'll be able to run it like we, we need everything to 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 uh to fall back into place because everyone wants to play i keep getting calls you know like oh we're gonna do summer league i want to play i know like i i i feel everybody but you know, it's just, it's just been, it's just, if it's not one thing, it's another thing as far as putting it together. But, um, but what we definitely have, have, have it, uh, in our sites cause it's, it's, 
it's a big thing and it's good for you know Hawaii basketball. Awesome, awesome. Well, cross the fingers on that. Um, last thing, you had told me a story, and you okay, just to back up a little bit. So when you went to Washington State, it was a program when you got there that was far from what you'd call one of the top teams in the Pac-10 at that time, right? By the time your junior and senior year, you're making the NCAA tournament. So you were part of the building up of that program, which I think is, you know, kind of a, what a great experience to be in from your freshman to your senior year, the growth that that program had. And you told me a story. I think it was your freshman year, right? I think I forgot what team you went and played. And I think it was on the road, but you got total lickens but yeah. that yeah. was kind of a foundation of what was to come but can you retell that story oh absolutely uh sorry i hope i don't take up too much of the time telling the uh telling this whole story i try to be you know quick but um so freshman year right we have six incoming freshmen so like a brand new team um we have like four seniors but so it, so the team was very imbalanced um it was the Bennett's, the coach uh, Dick Bennett and Tony Bennett's vision, you know, they, uh, to rebuild the program. And, you know, you were so nice how you described Washington State in the Pac-10 at that time. Pac uh, consider the, the joke of the Pac-10, right? Uh, but, you know, that didn't matter to me. I wanted to be a part of something special, and I believed in turning the program around. And, um, you know, so that first year for us, um, Coach Dick Bennett had the wonderful idea to schedule us a game against Oklahoma State at Oklahoma State. Um, at that time, they had they were ranked fifth in the nation. Uh, they had a upperclassman team filled with uh, John Lucas, I think was his name, if I remember correctly, a small little point point guard who went to the NBA. Um, uh, Graham twins, um, and they're. They were their fifth ranked team in the nation. Okay, so I don't need to say much more about them. Anyways, <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're stoked because we're really like, oh, we get to play these guys. That's what I'm talking about. You know, let's do this. Coach Dick Bennett, uh, what did he do? He chartered our flights, right? He chartered our flight. So here we're feeling like we're rock stars, right? Or like, oh, we're freshmen, man, we're chartering a flight all the way to Oklahoma State. We're going to get to play the fifth ranked team in the nation. Like we made it. This is division one basketball. This is, this is what we signed up for. Right. And then, um, uh, and then, so we go there, we're feeling good about ourselves. We say, Hey man, we can compete with these guys. Right? We're in the pack 10. Right. And, <laughs> uh, anyways, needless to say, um, I think uh, now this is where it gets a little fuzzy or maybe I'm just suppressing the memory, but like, I think we scored 12 points at halftime. I think it was like the lowest point scored at halftime, I think, ever. Um, it was embarrassing. Uh, at halftime, uh, yeah, I think we did score 12 points. Anyways, end of the game, it was like 89 to 29 or something like that. 92 to 29. And it was a complete disaster. Actually, maybe you talk about earlier in this interview about you know, things going wrong. I think that might have been one of the games. Like It just went wrong. And no matter what we did, but uh, after the game, okay, now this is the funny part. After the game, uh, we're in the locker room. We're thinking that um, we're going to get just screamed at, right, for our performance. Um, that Coach Dick Bennett was going to come in and just give it to us, every single one down the line. Uh, he walks into he walks into the, uh, the locker room, and we're all kind of just quiet and just devastated. And we're like, we're just waiting to get scream that and uh he 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 looks at every one of us and he's like he points out in the direction i don't know he just points out in direction and he's like that's that's a division one team and then he walks out you know and all of us were like <laughs> like you know because it kind of like it, it was it wasn't a lot of words from him but it was profound you know um you know because we all you know wanted to play division one basketball we were all there for a reason his vision was for us to become a team like that but it wasn't right now at that moment right he wanted to humble us and and see how we would respond you know from that kind of loss um you know uh, and then uh, it's funny because we were talking to tony you know um when i went to visit him 
and we always bring this up and it's conspiracy theory and, and, and he won't admit it, but we were saying like, Hey, um, did, Co- coach Bennett did that on purpose, right? Like he, he buttered us up by chartering the flight and making us feel like rock stars. Right. And just, he knew that was going to happen. And Tony just laughs, you know, with that little grin on his face. Um, but you know, <laughs> same, you know, that's, that's, it was, it was, uh, that was the intent from the beginning. Right. But fast forward, um, you know, junior, j- junior year, you know, we, we found some success, went to the NCAA second round, you know, um, tasted the, uh, the top 25 rankings senior year. Guess what, guess what ranked we were in my senior year for, a for, a, a quite a chunk of the season. We were ranked fifth in the nation. Right. So, I mean, if you really want to talk about coming full circle, you know, that, that team that we faced, Oklahoma State who was ranked fifth in the nation as freshmen. We were freshmen, you know. Um, that was what we envisioned us being eventually. And, you know, I thought the Bennett's had a great vision. You know, they, they understood how to rebuild the program and to turn it around. And, you know, four years later, you know, to, to understand, you know, what it was like to be that kind of team with that kind of success, you know, we were able to do that. So, you know, it, it was it was behind the mastermind and sadistic uh, thinking of coach Dick Bennett and what he put us through. It traumatized us forever and put us in the history books in a, in a, uh, in a not so good way, but it was all with a purpose. Right. And, you know, I thought that was awesome. And it was such a cool experience. Oh, I love that story. I just love it. Yeah. It's just the ultimate story of from like, the, the whole picture before and after and that process from the beginning to a four year period. I mean, it, it, that takes a cake. I mean, that should be, that should story should go to every program that is in the doldrums. And especially if you have a new coach or whatever, and that vision and the process, but that, that is so awesome. By the way, what's awesome is listening to ESPN Honolulu for men's basketball for university of Hawaii. Cause you guys sounded great. Congratulations again for getting the, uh, being the color. I so look forward to listening to you and Josh on the broadcast. And thanks so much for being a part of ESPN's Fan Friday Talk Story. Uh, thank you so much. Good being here. <laughs>